here on this YouTube channel, Team Keep It Clean, y'all know we share our opinion literally every single day on whatever the subject is, whether it's regarding the Baltimore Ravens or just something in the NFL in general. And some of the opinions people may agree with, maybe be like, hey, that's a good opinion, I like that. Hey, some opinions people may disagree with, maybe like, oh, no, I ain't really feeling that when I disagree. And either way, it's fine. All that y'all know that I care about is respect. Respect from me to you and you to me. That, that, that's all I care about. But sometimes when you have this way of thinking, when you have this certain mindset that you're in, and, and it's a way that you've been thinking for a long time, and there's somebody in the NFL world, the NFL media world that agrees with how you feel, it could be like, oh, yeah, okay, see, see, I got some, somebody thinking the same way I'm thinking. And that's how I felt with Rich Eisen. A, a couple days ago, we covered how Rich Eisen said on his show, his podcast, he said that the Ravens, yeah, they got Odell Beckham Jr. That was great. That was cool. That was lovely. But they should still, even after signing Odell Beckham Jr., he said they should still call up the Cardinals for DeAndre Hopkins. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, Rich, see, I, I know I liked you, but now I, I love you. I love you because I, I love that way of thinking. And that's what we've been saying even before the Ravens signed Odell Beckham Jr. We've been saying like, hey, Odell is cool. He would be nice, but we would need more. He shouldn't be it. He shouldn't be the only one. He shouldn't be the final piece of the puzzle. Ravens should, should go above and beyond. And apparently, allegedly... According to Michael Lombardi, Lamar is trying to make the Ravens go above and beyond. Or apparently he tried to make the Ravens go above and beyond. And let's read the report. And this is something that he said on his podcast. He said, I was told reliably by somebody who's involved that Lamar told the Ravens in a conversation, get Hopkins and get Beckham. You see, we got to go to English class real quick. Shout out to any of y'all that are English majors or some of y'all that just love language arts. Lamar said, get, apparently, again, allegedly, according to Michael Lombardi, Lamar said, get Hopkins and get Beckham. Not get Hopkins or get Beckham. Because if he would have said or, that would mean one or the other. But Lamar said, no, 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 no. Get both. Get Hopkins and Beckham. Get Hopkins and in addition to the first thing I listed, which was how get Beckham too. And I love it. I love it. Because, again, y'all know I felt like something like this should have happened years ago, long time ago, but hey, we're here now. But this is like, this is Lamar, like really carrying his weight around. Really, really trying to call some shots and, and really trying to put that pressure on the Baltimore Ravens and try to use everything in his power to show that he got some power, to show that he got some leverage, and to really try to make these Baltimore Ravens prove like, hey, you say you love me, show me. Odell Beckham Jr., he talked about it in his presser yesterday. He talked about how it's, he said it's, it's more important to be wanted than to just be like, hey, you know, we're glad that you're here. And this is Lamar really trying to make the Ravens be like, hey, do, do do you want me? Am I wanted here? Or are you just happy to have me? Which is it going to be? And, and, and I love this because it's a power move. It's a big time power move. Now, I wonder, could Lamar have requested something like this years ago? We know he was the one that uh, told them to draft Hollywood. And they drafted Hollywood. That was super early in his career before he like really took over. Um, because that was going into his first year as the week one starter for the Ravens. Um, he told them to draft Hollywood that year, and they did it. But, no, he was also uh, wanting Jerry Judy or Henry Ruggs or C.D. Lamb. I think it was Judy or C.D. that he really wanted. Um, but the Ravens, they couldn't make that happen. And that was the same dra – that draft was the same year, right before the first round of the draft. That was when DeAndre Hopkins got traded. Now, I wonder if Lamar could have asked for something like that back then. But he didn't have, he wasn't, obviously wasn't in the same position that he's in right now to ask for something like that. He could have, but the Ravens might have been like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, all right. But it, I would not, obviously wouldn't have had no problem if he would have asked for it. And I certainly 
wouldn't have had a problem if the Ravens would have provided that for him years ago. But again, we're here now. So um, continuing, uh, it said, and let's just recap it real quick. He said, I, I, Mike Lombardi, again, he said, I was told reliably by somebody who was involved that Lamar Jackson told the Ravens in a conversation, get Hopkins and get Beckham, and then we can talk. So Lamar Jackson is he's using that contract to his advantage. He's using his current status with the Baltimore Ravens to his advantage. It's part of negotiation. So many people, they assume, and again, if this is true, so many people assume that the Odell Beckham Jr. signing, yeah, it was to add a nice receiver to go with the Ravens or whatnot, but it was also a negotiation tactic. It was something to try to help lure in Lamar back to the Ravens. Like, hey, Lamar, look, we got Odell now. Hey, you want to talk now? Hey, we got a nice receiver. Hey, can we start negotiating again? Can we talk about this contract some more? Can we get this thing hammered out? So many people assume that. And if this is true, all those people will be right. All those people will be correct. And, and it was never a, a far-fetched idea that the Baltimore Ravens bringing in an Odell Beckham Jr. was part of them trying to negotiate with Lamar. That, that didn't sound, it never once sounded crazy at all. I mean, I, th I think so many people, they realized that even before all the talking heads, they started talking about it before all the ESPN and NFL networks and FS1 and this and that. Before all them started talking about it, people would do that. People, people see what the game is, and that's all part of the game within the game. It's business. It's a business move to try to entice the quarterback who they want to bring back. So it is no shocker. But all the people who thought that, again, if this is, this is true, then all those people would be correct. But continuing. So Lamar told the Ravens in a conversation, get Hopkins and get Beckham, and then we can talk. And the club went back to him and said, look, we can't get Hopkins and Beckham. We just can't get both. We can't afford both. But we'll get one of them. And they got Odell Beckham Jr. You see, uh, pressure. Pressure can buy, bust pipes. And I'm hoping that this pressure that Lamar Jackson apparently, allegedly, put on the Baltimore Ravens, I'm hoping it, it, it busts. The, those Ravens pipes and they end up succumbing to get both because that would just put the Baltimore Ravens the team and for me personally it would put it would make me think of them so differently than I do it, it, it would give me a lot more confidence in them moving forward that would this year at least it would give me so much more confidence in them because if they were to get, they got Odell back on Jr. paid him a lot of money. But if they were able to get DeAndre Hopkins as well, and they would obviously have to pay him a lot of money, that would show me, it, it, not just me, because I ain't nobody, but that, that would show a lot of people, oh, the Ravens are, they pushing all the chips in. The Ravens are really trying to make this thing happen. Oh, the, the Ravens, they really going in because they haven't done it before. They haven't done it before. Ravens have been such a, a, a safe team. They've been a safe team, a comfortable team, to where they're, it's like they're, they're in this limbo right now. They're in limbo where they don't go all in, and they've been competitive over the years, but they haven't been true contenders. They win the majority of their games. They'll make the playoffs, but they don't do nothing there. They don't do enough there. And... It's like you, you, see, you see so many possibilities when you think about it. When you step back and you look at the teams, you're like, man. You think back at previous teams, like, oh, man, that could have been something. Oh, that could have been nice. Oh, they just were missing a little piece here and a little piece there. Obviously, health, health has ruined a lot for the Baltimore Ravens over the years. But we just want to see – I can't speak for everybody. I just really want to see a really aggressive – off season for the Baltimore Ravens, where they're really just going all out to try to make stuff happen, to try to really build a true contender, not a competitive team. They, they, got, they got that already. That's one thing about them Ravens. They're they going to compete. No matter who they got uh, putting on the, the pads and putting on the jersey, that's one thing about Harbaugh. Harbaugh's going to have them boys ready to compete with anybody. You're going to 
they ain't gonna get blown out, even if they ain't got their starter here, no starter there, got guys that's injured. One thing about them Ravens, you can say a lot about them Ravens, you can say a lot about John Harbaugh, but one thing, he will always have them in the thick of things competing. Blowouts hardly ever happen. Not just because you're competitive don't mean you're winning all them games now, but still, Harbaugh will have them right there in the end. Then there are little bumps in the road close to the end, then. Well, anyway, you know how it goes. So I ain't worried about them competing. I ain't worried about them building a competitive team because they have that already, but building a true contender, building a bully, like EDC said when he first stepped on the scene, that's what I want to see. Building an indefensible offense. These are not terms that I came up with. These are straight from EDC from when he stepped on the scene. But the Ravens, they never built that. This is a golden opportunity, a prime opportunity to do that. EDC, hey, make it happen. We would love it. I would love it. A lot of people would love it. A lot of us would just, we would love it if you could make that happen. So, hey, meet, meet Lamar's demands. So y'all can talk and, like, Lamar won't be, like, me at the end of these videos and be out.